Brendan, I'm a low carb success story from New Zealand and I'm joined today by Jennifer Eisenhardt, director of the, the brand new film Fat Fiction. Now when we say brand new, how new is this? It's released today. Today is the release date for the film. So yeah, it's uh, day one. <laughs> awesome. Let's, let's check out the trailer. Okay. You look at the data of ever increasing obesity and diabetes and you just think, maybe we're being told the wrong advice. We've been told forever that fat's gonna kill you. There's incontrovertible evidence that saturated fat is bad. Over and over and over. You're fat because you eat too much fat. So low fat, low fat, low fat, low fat, low fat. It's hard to think of another policy that has caused so much harm, that has been so wrong. I think the food pyramid is great if you're standing on your head. Should we call the food tombstone? I mean, the manipulation of the data and the push for low fat really got us in trouble. I just gorged myself on all these carbohydrates and it was toxic. I think the low fat diet is genocide. It's a recipe for diabetes. When I did everything they told me to do, I'd still gain weight. And so then you just give up. We can't field an army because they are too fat to fight. I had to raise my hand and say, we have a problem here. If we changed the food, we could solve this problem. I'm excited about it. I'm excited to try the recipes. I'm grateful to be doing it. It's very fascinating to me. So I got my brain back. I got my energy back. I started to see my children's father come back. I don't know anyone else who's lost as much weight as you have. I lost over 200 pounds. It's just mind-boggling. No diabetes. How can you not acknowledge that? It's like a miracle. It's miraculous what just food can do. We told people to stop eating butter and eat this poison instead. That is like mind-blowing. Wait a minute. Have you not seen? Are you not practicing medicine to see who's coming into your clinic? I was following the government guidelines. It's just, to me, unbelievable. Like they say, you can't outrun your fork. It's really just terrible science. It's total, sheer madness. I mean, it's like no wonder we're all fat and sick. Wow, that was, that was really, really powerful. Um, lots of personal success stories, I imagine. Mm -hmm. What's the general theme of, of the film about? Yeah, so the film is really about the history of the dietary guidelines, um, first started in the United States and then kind of got uh, exported to the rest of the world. And we just talk about how we got the story so wrong about fat. And it's not only the history of how we got that story so wrong, but it's also a lot of um, personal stories of people, particularly people who are suffering from metabolic diseases like type 2 diabetes, who are ignoring the current guidelines and reversing their diseases and restoring their health. So, so it's kind of a combination of that story of how we got it so wrong combined with what people are doing to get it right again. So you're talking with um, various uh, doctors and, and medical professionals, mm -hmm. um, how they were uh, in effect led astray, I, I suppose you would describe it? Yes, yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, one of the physicians that we interview in the film, Dr. Brian Linsky, uh, he for many years practiced low fat in his, in his practice until he himself started becoming pre-diabetic and gaining weight and he couldn't get the weight off. And, you know, he said for many years he thought his patients just weren't listening to him, his patients just were not following his advice. Well, come to find out, he was giving bad advice because he knew he was following the advice. I mean, he was exactly following the guidelines. He was working out five days a week and yet he was still gaining weight. And so he's a story that we feature and we profile. And, and once he turned his practice around, how he was able to help his patients uh, turn their health around as well is pretty inspiring. And I suppose there's nothing quite like real, actual, tangible results mm -hmm. to, to get um, both the, the health professionals and the patients themselves uh, on board with the approach. Well, yeah, I mean, you're a living example of that, right? So how many... say that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so that's what we try to do with the film is, you know, uh, we, we spend a lot of time talking about the theories and the, the macronutrients and um, what you can do to, to turn your health around, but then we mix in with that a bunch of personal stories of people who are actually doing it or who have done it um, and, and how they were able to reverse their type 2 diabetes or reverse other metabolic or health issues that they had just by changing the way that they eat. So it starts off with a, a history, if you like, of uh, the dietary guidelines, uh, how they came about, mm -hmm. um, and, and then beyond that, just the, the realization that something's not quite right here. What's yeah. going on? Yeah, and that it continues to be not quite right. I mean, this year the Dietary Guidelines Committee is meeting and discussing what the next dietary guidelines for the United States will be uh, from 2020 to 2025. And, uh, you know, so far it's kind of looking like it's going to be business as usual again, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see. But um, what our film focuses on is people who have finally decided the guidelines aren't working for me. I'm going to try something radically different. And uh, lo and behold, for many of them it works. Because the guidelines are, are really um, aimed at, at keeping people healthy, right, as opposed to say, making people healthy. Mm -hmm. There's a certain difference there, would you say? Yeah, that's, and that's the discussion. It's like, well, the guidelines aren't for people who are metabolically unhealthy, but the problem is, is when the guidelines were introduced in 1980, the rates of obesity and type 2 diabetes just took off like a rocket. And so, you know, it's correlation, it's not causation, but you have to just look at that and wonder, did the guidelines influence the obesity epidemic in, in America? And the, a lot of the people that we interview in the film believe that they do. So that they're, that they're not uh, just for healthy people, that in fact when you eat that much carbohydrate in your diet, that it uh, for many people causes obesity. So that's, that's the great debate, you know, still ongoing in our country and around the world. Um, but what's interesting is when people go against the guidelines, we see their health being restored. And what sort of degree of hope do we see uh, for the future? Like as we, we say at the moment, our progress might be a little slow, but um, sooner or later you feel things will, will come around? Well, I mean, that's difficult to say at this point. You know, uh, this is the year that the U.S. Dietary Guidelines Committee is meeting and discussing options for the next round of uh, dietary guidelines for Americans, um, the 2020 to 2025 uh, round of guidelines. There are a lot of great organizations working to try to influence those guidelines to add a low carbohydrate option, um, but it remains to be seen whether that will be added. And at what degree that will be added. Like there's also debate over what really is low carbohydrate. Is it less than 45% of daily calories as carbohydrate or is it less than 25%? And that remains, you know, up for debate. Um, so, but I, I think what, at least from what I've learned in doing this film and interviewing the experts that really know about this topic, it, it feels like the people are the ones who are going to make the change rather than governments. It feels like the groundswell of people that are ignoring the guidelines and able to restore their health with high fat, low carb uh, diets, whole food diets, um, it's becoming difficult to ignore. So I, I, I do believe the groundswell is going to be coming up from the people versus down from uh, governments. Fingers crossed, anyway. So the film is uh, brand new, it's, it's out now, is that right? When can we, what can people do to, to go see it? Where can they go? Yeah, so the film is available on a platform called fanforce.com, and so people can go to that platform, they can sign up to host screenings at their local cinema, and it's very easy to do. You just log on and you request to host a screening at your local cinema, and you just need to get about, approximately about 50 people to log on and purchase tickets, and then that screening will be booked. Um, if for some reason not enough people buy tickets, then the screening is just canceled and nobody loses any money, so it's pretty risk-free. And the neat thing about this platform is it also allows people to conduct a Q&A after the film plays. So if you're a nutritionist or a diabetes educator um, and you would like to host a screening, you can, you know, invite 
people from your community to come see the film and then and then conduct a Q&A afterwards and help people find resources for how they could start this lifestyle. Um, because of the uh, coronavirus outbreak and people not wanting to go to theaters right now, we will be scheduling a series of virtual cinema screenings, online screenings, and we'll be announcing that very soon on our Facebook page. Um, our Facebook page is Fat Fiction on Facebook, so we'll be announcing where you can buy tickets and how you can watch the virtual cinema screenings in April and May of this year, and then we'll be um, encouraging people to sign up to host local cinema screenings at, at uh, Real Cinemas beginning in June. All right, well let's hope it certainly uh, gets some traction out there. Uh, Jennifer Eisenhart, director, thank you very much and uh, all the best for the film. Thank you so much.